All of the cars at the Geneva Motor Show have now been revealed. All of this on today's episode of Sinclair News. What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Sinclair News. I'm your host AJ, Sinclair Photos, and it's delightful to have you today. You're looking beautiful and uh, we got some great, great news for you guys. But before we hop into that, just wanted to let you know we are almost to 30,000 subscribers. We're at 29,628 I believe at the time of this recording and I just can't thank you guys enough for sticking around, subscribing, and uh, supporting me through this awesome, awesome time of year. Uh, also, uh, once we do hit our goal of 30,000 subscribers, we will be doing the model car giveaway. I have confirmed everything for that, and uh, once we hit the mark, I'll give you guys more information on it and show you what car we're giving away. But other than that, let's hop right into our first and big story. So as all of you know, the Geneva Motor Show is a show that goes on every year and it's one of the biggest automotive things that happens in the entire year. Up there with like Quail, Pebble Beach, SEMA, and uh, the Goodwood Festival of Speed. This is really one of the staples of the car world where all the car big car manufacturers come together and show off their latest and greatest creations. And sadly this year because of the coronavirus, the Geneva Motor Show had been canceled for uh, regular spectators. So what all the car manufacturers did, I thought this was pretty cool, was they had their own little little Geneva Motor Show for their brand. So today we're going to be covering McLaren's new release, Koenigsegg's new release, Bugatti's, and Bentley. Those are the big four ones that I've seen on Instagram floating around today, and I'd be delighted to share more information with you. So let's jump in right to McLaren, which is uh, one of the most exciting releases of this year. So McLaren has finally unveiled the 765 LT. It's kind of like a play on 675, which is kind of confusing to me, but we have the new iteration of the 720, the LT version of that. Just like the 650S got the 675 LT, the 720S now has the 765 LT. And everyone's raving about how good this thing looks, and it's no, there's no secret, I love the way the 720S looks. But I really just think that this has a four pipe exhaust. That's the only thing I see that's different. If you guys can help me out in uh, finding anything else that's different, please let me know. But I do know it comes with around 40 more horsepower and I think they said 80 kilograms lighter, which is like the stripped out race car version of the 720S. So I'm super excited to see this in the little trailer they showed that shoots big fireballs just like the 600 LT does. So I'm sure that these will be floating around very, very soon in the car community and I cannot wait to see them and see the reactions of people that uh, pick them up because the, I've been told the 720S is the fastest street car you can get right now. Now I haven't experienced it myself, I hope to in the near future, but if that is, if the 720S is that fast and they make a more hardcore, lighter, faster version of that, that is going to be absolutely insane and I cannot wait to see what people are going to say about this car. I'm going to play the little trailer for you guys that McLaren released. Uh, so let's sit back and uh, watch the official unveil of the 765 LT. Cool. I hope you enjoyed McLaren's release. Now let's hop on to the second one, the big one that no one really saw coming, 
the Koenigsegg release. Well, okay, so I'm gonna put this before the Koenigsegg part. Uh, I just found this video on YouTube already from Koenigsegg of them uh, revealing these cars and explaining them to you. So I'm gonna play the video of the uh, the first car that's gonna get released, the Yesco Absolute. I'm gonna let Christian tell you everything about it, and then I'm gonna play the, I guess the part of the video for the next car that's coming out after that car is done. So, uh, take it away Christian, let's do this thing. The Ghosts. We ended up in the Ghost Squadron hangars. Now, a low-flying fighter, just a few centimeters off the ground. The Yesco Absolute. Ladies and gentlemen, the Jesco Absolute. So what is this machine we have in front of us? <clears throat> Many of you can recognize it from last year's Track Focus Jesco. But this year, it's the high speed focused Jesco. This is the fastest Koenigsegg we will ever endeavor to make. We spent thousands of hours in CFD calculations and streamlining this car from a design perspective, from a cooling perspective, from a high speed stability perspective. We ended up with a drag of only 0 0.278. It is the lowest drag number for any of these types of cars. With 1600 horsepower, with 1500 newton meters of torque, you need a lot of cooling and you need wide tires to put the power to the ground. And you still do need downforce to make it stable. And to end up with that kind of low drag number is truly amazing. And if you do your math and if you check our RPM limits, uh, the power graph and the drag of this car, you will see the potential of the top speed of this car. It is truly amazing. Like last time when we took the world speed record for a series produced homologated car on a public road in two directions, we had to wait years to find the right venue and to be able to close off a road. And it was also still dangerous. There can be winds, there can be animals, there can be something rolling out on the road. It's just dangerous uh, activity to do this kind of high-speed testing. But if you do it in a controlled manner, you can minimize the risks. And it would be a shame not to show what this car is capable of. When it will happen, we don't know yet. Exactly how, we don't know yet. But we've built the car to be able to set new high-speed records. So the next big thing in Geneva today is the release of the Koenigsegg Gamera. Now, no one saw this coming, no one thought that this was ever gonna happen, but we now have a four-seater Koenigsegg, the Grand Tour, it's a Hyper GT, the first in its class, it seems, and this thing looks interesting. The egg, the perfect shape. Strong, simple, unquestionable. All Koenigseggs have cockpits in the shape of the egg. For the first time, we complete the egg. So, the Koenigsegg Gemera. Gemera is actually a name my mother came up with for this car. 
It's Swedish for to give more. Ge mera. And then we pushed that together into a new word. So it became the gemera. <clears throat> what does that mean? We believe this car really gives more. We have a full size mega car. It is a mid-engine car. It gives the impression of being a mid-engine car. But inside, you have an interior space never before seen in even a GT sports car. You can be four two meters persons fitting in this car, front and rear. You don't even need to move the front seats backwards or forwards to get in and out of the rear seat. The Koenigsegg door system really comes into play here because you can park this car right next to another one, this close, and open the door fully. Uh, it's really practical. We have some sensors up here, so if you're in a low garage, it will stop a little bit early. Uh, but this is designed to fit in 95% of all garages in the world. But if you have a really low one, it will stop at an earlier angle. <coughs> you also have sensors stopping the door going out if there would be an obstacle here. Uh, but it is also cleared for high curbs, which is practical. So the technology behind this car is truly unheard of. The combustion engine is 600 horsepower and 600 newton meters of torque from a three-cylinder engine. It is really a little monster of an engine. It is only two liters, but it has twin turbo and it has three valves. And it is designed to run on renewable fuels. It is capable of being CO2 neutral, the engine and the car. So we really want to put an end to fossil fuel dependency on combustion engines. And the advantage of doing that is that compared to a pure electric car, this one is at least 30% lighter than it would otherwise be with that range and power if it was pure electric. So you get a more agile, <coughs> roomier car with better acceleration, better cornering, better braking, still CO2 neutral capable if you find the right fuel. It is flex fuel, so you can run on what, whatever you can find basically, but it is optimized and envisioned to run on renewable biofuels. Uh, I'm not gonna say I'm totally sold on the looks right away. Maybe it's just the color or maybe it's the doors, but in some of these pictures that they've posted, the doors look huge. Now I understand that it's like a one door where the traditional two doors open out, but these are have one door on each side that kind of scissor door up and the doors are almost as long as the car itself, which I don't know, I'm gonna have to get used to that one, but I really, really like the idea. Uh, it's been rumored it has the same kind of power plant as the Yesco, which I'd really like to hear that as <laughs> a grand tour and know if it's comfortable and all those sorts of details. But as you can see by some of the pictures they posted, the back seats are absolutely humongous. This is no Nissan GTR where they say it's a four seater and the back seats are this big or like in my car where you literally can't fit anyone in the back seat. These back seats are humongous and it looks like you can fit four comfortably and there's all lots of technology. Looks like it has the same steering wheel as the Yesco and a big kind of Tesla screen in the back for the whoever gets to ride in the back of one of these things. Now I'm sure that the Koenigsegg owners are clapping for them because now they can have something they can drive around every day, go to the grocery store and uh, just carry a bunch of extra stuff whenever you want to go fast I guess. But let me know what you guys have to think about the Koenigsegg Gamera coming out 2021, maybe 2022, hopefully. Fingers crossed. I don't even think Yeskos have started coming out on the production line yet, so it's interesting to see them release a new, like a totally different platform without having finished or even gotten started really on the Yeskos. So I'd like to know what you think about it. I think it looks kind of like a Taycan uh, mixed with a car from GTA, but I don't know. It'll probably grow on me in the future, and once I see one in person, I'm sure I'll love it. So, let's go on to the third release from Bentley. 
Now I gotta look on my phone for this one, but this is a, a new bespoke Bentley called the Bentley Mulliner Baclar. Let me know if I'm saying that wrong. I think I will be, but very interesting name for a very cool looking car in my opinion. They took the new design of the, like this is 2020 Bentley, and they added a couple different vents to it. I guess this light goes from the headlight and just bends around the side. Different wheels, and it is a convertible, which is very cool. I'm just gonna read the post from Shmi. I'll put it up on the picture, uh, on the screen right now. It says, the new Bentley Mulliner Baclar is the most exclusive bespoke Bentley model of the modern era, as only 12 units will be produced with a price tag of, get this, 1.5 million euros plus tax. With an entirely coach built body, my Mulliner, it is a permanent open top grand touring Barchetta with an inspiration from the EXP 100 GT. Now, I don't know what that is, but I don't think this is an actual Bentley car. I think this has a sort of like Mansory take on it, or but Mulliner. I've never heard of that brand before, but they're making 12 units rumored at around 1.5 million euros a piece. So the big ballers will have these things and I can't wait. I really do like the design and uh, a bespoke Bentley. That's something that we haven't seen before and I like it. Now we're gonna end with the big boy, the also one no one saw coming, the new Bugatti. Now we have one of the most exciting unveils of the year coming from Bugatti the big boys of the hypercar industry battling it out with Koenigsegg and they knew Koenigsegg was coming out with something so they made the new Bugatti Pure Sport. I don't know if that's just a typo by these guys or it's supposed to be Pure Sport or Pure Sport is the actual name of the car. This thing looks like a very sleek smooth design Chiron with some fixed aero because I know they saw my videos they were like dang his FRS has a huge fixed wing. We gotta have a Chiron with a huge fixed wing. So I'm thumbsing up them for joining the big Wang gang. As you can see in some of the pictures I'll put up on the screen, it says Bugatti on top of the wing. Very nice. Uh, I believe it's around the same power plant as the Chiron Sport 300, the one that did 300 miles an hour. But this is very cool. It kind of looks like it has no eyebrows too, which I mean, eh. uh, the front, I'll have to get used to, but I really do like the rear of it with the big fixed wing. I feel like that is a must have for those cool next generation hypercars that are coming out on the market. Not a lot is known about these cars, but we do know they're out and they're looking absolutely beautiful. Please let me know what the favorite one of yours is in the comment section below. Was it the Bentley, Bugatti, Koenigsegg, or the new McLaren? I don't know, let's think. I'm probably going to have to say my favorite is the new Bugatti, um, then the McLaren, then the Koenigsegg, then the Bentley. I'd like to know what you guys have to say. Thank you guys once again for stopping by. I really appreciate it. And if any more cars get revealed, that will be in the next episode of Sinclair News. So stay tuned. If you're new to the channel, please smash that subscribe button. We're almost to our goal, 30,000 subscribers in the next big giveaway. Always remember guys. Watch the best and skip the rest. If you like the video, please smash that like button, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video.